Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Show and Tell Show. Uh, we are in episode 20-something, which is pretty incredible that we've been doing this this long. Um, this week, we were challenged by Penetang Machine Centennial Museum. Oh, hi, by the way, Jan and Nicole. Hi. hi. Yeah, Genevieve. Hey, Jen. And me, we're, oh, uh, we're ready, but you have to show us first. So what have you got that starts with the letter M? So what we have is something that you can see, you can hold, you would think it's very real, but it's not very real. Hmm. Ooh, can you guys guess what it is? Oh my God, 20 questions, wow. <laughs> I don't think I would guess what that was. <laughs> so the theme was M for money, or sorry, that's what oh! I'm saying. Oh! <laughs> But oh. as a special kind of money, Beck dollars. Oh. oh. So if I put Dollar. that up, hopefully you can see that. So uh, the museum is housed inside the an 1875 general store that was owned by the C. Beck Manufacturing Company. And back in the late 1800s, they had a lumber mill just across the street. And they used to pay all their employees at their lumber mill half their wage in just regular Canadian money and half their wage in Beck money. And so they used to spend their Beck money inside the general store here. So that's why they had the general store here where the museum is and right beside it was their lumber office. And so this was $1. And then of course we have, you know, 50 cents. And 25, we have a 10, which is larger than a five, we have a five, and then we even have a penny, which is a different color. And, uh, the Beck company was um, really employed a lot of people in the area, so this money actually started to be accepted throughout the town and all the other stores as well. It was quite normal for general stores to give away tokens um, as change and that you, you then you would have to exchange at their store again. But Charles Beck was, was you know, went that one step further by paying his employees half their wage in it. And it'd be kind of like working for Canadian Tire now getting half your wage in Canadian Tire money. So it was something that you could practice in the late 1800s just because um, the, there was no Bank of Canada at that time. Um, the, the Department of Finance is the one that um, made money and that was a federal and it was, you know, it had so many other um, departments within it. So it didn't really have a lot of control of the money in the small town. So that's why you kind of get away with it. But once the um, Bank of Canada was established in 1934, all of those little towns and their money they were giving away kind of stopped. So... That is our little artifact for today. Uh, yeah, I don't think the Ministry of Labor would allow that today. <laughs> Not today. No. 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 Okay. In the, you know, 1800s with all the monopolies, you know, that was a thing you could do, but... Not anymore. <laughs> wow. That's really cool you have that. That's awesome. And you have so many different examples of it, right? Yes. We mm -hmm. even actually in our collection have one from the Thompson Gen General Store too here in oh, town. Oh. So that it wasn't just the Becks that gave it out, but we we definitely have more of the Beck Bucks than we do of the other stores in town. So oh, cool. Wow. What do we have, Genevieve? Over with the letter M from Herodian. We Museum. have oh. two World War One military. Medals. We've got the Victory Medal and the British War Medal. But I'm going to go back a few years to 1917 um, when this fella here, Tsar Nicholas II, was deposed by the Bolsheviks and uh, Vladimir Lenin. It's caused some problems um, while everyone else was fighting uh, in Western Europe. Um, because the Bolsheviks made peace with the Germans and the 
I guess, allied powers, the British, um, they knew that in the long term, this would cause problems, this Bolshevik government would cause problems for them. But in the short term, they wanted um, the Russians uh, and the Tsarist, I guess, government back in the war to help them fight the Germans and the Austrians in Western Europe. Um, so what they did is they agreed to send troops to uh, North uh -oh. Russia. Northern Russia. Northern um, Russia. That fourth, oh, 4,000. Yeah, Northern Russia. 4,200 Canadian troops ended up in uh, Vladivostok. And among them was a young man, about 25 years old, named Charlie Hubert White from Midland. And that's him standing in front of his house on 6th Street newly married he'd been married for about two months he just turned 25 that's him and here he is in russia <laughs> wow. wow look at the coat there yeah. he is yes very warm um now the interesting thing about the metal is uh, normally they're all inscribed on this edge. You can't see that here, but they're all inscribed with the regimental number and the name and rank of the, the fellow to whom it was issued. And the interesting thing is that all of the other medals in our collection say CEF for Canadian Expeditionary Forces. But this medal says CSEF, which is the Canadian Siberian Expeditionary Forces. So um, because he had enlisted fairly late in the war, in May, the end of May in 1918, he was not sent overseas to um, France or Belgium, but rather he was sent to Russia. He, let's see, I've got it written right here. Um, he departed Canada on November 17th, 1918. So actually after um, the war had, had officially ended and he arrived in Siberia at the beginning of 19. Uh, December 1918. Now these guys weren't really given any permission to um, engage actively in, you know, any kind of military battles while they were up in Russia. So really all they did uh, was guard supplies that had been given by um, allied forces to the Tsar before he was deposed to make sure that the Bolsheviks didn't get them. Uh, and then they said, did a lot of drilling and they actually kind of seemed to enjoy themselves. Uh, it was a fairly large city, although about 90% of it at the time was uh, were supporters of the Bolsheviks. Uh, so it was probably a bit uh, I'm sure there was a lot of opposition to their being there, um, but they, they seem to have enjoyed themselves. They played a lot of soccer. Um, they went to the theater. It, it seemed to be quite a nice time. They weren't there very long by 19, uh, June of 1960, June of 1919, uh, he was back on a ship headed for Vancouver. So um, yeah, he had an interesting time. I know when he came back, he was a cloak cutter. I'm not sure where he worked and came back as a manufacturer and eventually he ended up as an insurance agent in Midland. So he seemed to have led a pretty quiet life after uh, his adventures in Russia. And one of the few fellas that could say that I don't know. He'd been to the Soviet Union, which is pretty, yeah. pretty exciting adventure for anyone in the 20th century. So that's Charlie Hubert White of Midland. Oh, and we got to see his medals. Medals. That's medals. Right. Military Damn. medals. Damn. Okay. Well, thanks, Jen. Now, next week, I thought this would be kind of fun because uh, we do, I mean, we're all home, we're all cooking more and all that. Next week's challenge is a recipe from our community. And I'm sure we have tons in our collections. Mm -hmm. There's so many community cookbooks from different special interest groups and all of that. So let's see what we can find for a recipe and bonus points for actually making it. Oh, goody. What do we get huh. for the bonus points? Yeah. I don't, 
an extra special oh. challenge for the following week. <laughs> well, then why would we want to do bonus <laughs> Or how about a day with Groot? <gasps> okay. Yeah, a day with Groot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you better wear special armor. He's very big. Anyway, okay. Thanks a lot for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next week on the Show and Tell Show. Bye. Bye. Bye.